Hey everybody, I'm here to take you through some maintenance strategies for a short pile synthetic turf golf green, uh, meaning like a half inch pile height nylon or polyethylene, which is commonly used for backyard golf greens. Um, there's uh, a few strategies I'd like to take you through. Uh, golf greens over time can um, grow moss, weeds, uh, look a little dirty and dated. Um, the, the longer turf can start to mat over, um, things can kind of grow in the fibers and whatnot. So I'm just going to take you through some strategies and techniques here to get that golf green looking good as new sort of thing. So, uh, the first tool that I use to kind of just do a once over is a leaf blower, uh, gets all kind of big loose debris off, allows you to take a look at sort of the nitty gritty of the putting green and see what needs work and what doesn't. Uh, be careful with the leaf blower around the cup locations because it can get wind under the turf uh, that in most cases that's not really attached there. And what that can do is push the gravel around underneath the golf green. So um, just try and put a brick down over top of the cup or step on the cup when you're blowing around it. But just be careful you don't get too much wind under that cup. It could cause uh, damage that's hard to fix. So... One of the other first things I look for is if there's no border around the green, uh, which is probably the most natural look, uh, what you can find as a consequence of that is uh, natural grass and weeds encroaching in on, on the artificial turf. So a lot of that needs to be pulled out by hand. Um, the roots of those weeds and grasses are, can get at uh, you can get at it with uh, just a typical kitchen fork, something like that, just to kind of to kind of clean it up. Um, next, I'll, I'll just take a weed eater to the edge just to, again, try and clean that up and get any of the natural growth away from the edge as best as possible. Um, to date, I haven't seen a weed eater that can wreck the fibers of the artificial turf. So uh, if you want to be safe, you could use sort of a, a softer wire on your, uh, on your weed eater. But um, yeah, like I said, I haven't seen anything be able to damage it. Um, I'll kind of leaf blow the, the clippings off just so those don't sort of sink in and, uh, yeah, take a look at the, the exposed edge. Um, I'll want to get down deep into the fibers of the turf with a power broom if you have one. Um, if not, I'm going to get at the benefits of a pressure washer here in a bit, but uh, a power broom is really good for getting down into the fibers, getting organic debris to the surface and helping to kind of stand those fibers back up in their intended direction. Um, if, if necessary, I'll, I'll kind of edge the front of the green uh, just to create sort of a clean edge and give room for, for growth to kind of not encroach right away sort of thing onto the uh, artificial turf. Um, yeah, I'll uh, kind of continue to clean, clean that edge up as best as possible. Um, moving on to kind of the, the, the major tool I've found for artificial turf is, is a pressure washer. Um, so I think the one I'm using is 2,500 PSI, so not super strong, um, which is probably good. But yeah, you can take it over the surface of the green as long as you're careful. Um, you don't want to get uh, get that, that nozzle in too close because it can kind of disorient the fibers of the turf and get those pushed off in, in a direction that they're not supposed to, which is also hard to fix. So just be gentle, kind of be mindful of what you're doing. Blow the debris out as best as possible, but don't get too aggressive, um, which you, you really shouldn't need to. Uh, the pressure washer also works wonderfully for the fringe around the green and any just regular artificial turf installation. Uh, it just basically, you know, revitalizes the fibers. It blows out any organic debris, kind of gets the fibers loose and standing up again in their intended direction sort of thing. Um, you have an example here of my kids' play area that I installed long ago in the shade. Tons of moss growing right to the top of the turf. Um, tons of organic debris. Uh, basically, I'm going to show you here what a pressure washer can do to that area. Um, you get to this video clip here where you can kind of see the old and then it uh, pans in on the new and you can just see it. It blows out all the organic debris. It makes a heck of a mess, but uh, yeah, it gets the fibers looking good again um moving on uh the the shop vac is a great tool um i've actually switched to a regular house vacuum uh, which seems crazy but uh, for regular maintenance on the green 
uh, and just a general kind of site cleanup. A regular vacuum is quick and easy and does a great job. <clears throat> but the shop vac, um, you know, good for picking up little stones and things like that if they're left behind or have been blown out of the fibers. Great for sucking the debris out of the uh, golf cup itself. So uh, another good tool. Another tool that you might not find necessary is uh, a compactor. Um, I like to do this once every spring or once every other spring, um, especially over a harsh winter, just because uh, the freeze-thaw cycle, at least locally in British Columbia, can be uh, pretty drastic. And what I'd find is some golf greens can lose a little bit of compaction underneath the surface of the uh, the putting surface. So um, just a once-over with with a compactor in, a, in the smoothest, best possible way uh, can be a useful application, but I wouldn't recommend this unless you have experience with a compactor. So maybe your installation company might be able to come back, you know, every year or two just to kind of uh, give it a once over and get everything back into place. It also helps with uh, the crowning around the cups. Sometimes there's extra moisture around the cups, so those can heave just ever so slightly. Um, that coupled with Nobody ever really stepping on the cup, always stepping sort of a few inches away from the cup um, can cause a, a little bit of crowning around the cup. So the plate tamper is good, good for that. You can go right over the cups and right over the green and it just pounds everything back down into place. Um, yeah, and so I kind of take you through a, a finished product. Um, essentially, you know, there's, there's no real reason you can't get your project looking new again. Um, you know, if the regular power broom sort of uh, pressure wash combo doesn't uh, quite do it you can also uh, repaint the insides of your cups uh, if you do it carefully you can replace the the faded flags you can kind of see my flags are a bit faded there um, and and that also helps kind of getting it look good as new so hopefully these little tips and tricks are kind of enough to help you uh, leave a comment or a question I'll do my best to get back to you but um, yeah, good luck with your synthetic turf uh, restoration project. And uh, yeah, play well. Talk to you soon. Bye.